Hi, my name is David Noyes. The uh, title of my presentation today is Just Add Water for the Artifactory Art in the Afternoon presentation. Um, what I <clears throat> have come to realize is art means some special things to me. It's a most peaceful and mindful activity. Once I'm focused on a subject to paint, I lose track of time and space. It makes me learn to really look at all kinds of objects. We walk by commonplace things and people frequently without really seeing them. Improving the technical outcomes of my art are important, but not I'm not in it for money or fame. Becoming a better artist is a good goal, but it's not the primary reason I paint. Choosing subjects for my artwork involves memory in many cases. Like many people my age, we did not always have cameras and cell phones with us when we were younger. I have experiences and memories of activities and events for which there are no known photographs other than what I carry in my head. An example of this was my motorcycle trip from San Diego, California to Laramie, Wyoming in 1968. Another example was the six weeks I traveled through Europe in the summer of 1970. One photo exists taken by a stranger. Having enthusiasm for a subject is important, I'm discovering in my eighth year of painting. When we become too invested in the outcome, and who doesn't, we lose touch with the pleasure of being and doing in the moment. And who doesn't love those moments when we're deeply into a painting, whisked away for hours at a stretch, buoyed by the flow of creation. In addition to watercolor painting, I use pencils, pen and ink, chalk pastels, colored pencils. I grew up in a time when boys were required to know something about making useful things in wood shop and metal shop classes in eighth grade. We were taught to use power equipment and hand tools. Before moving to Iowa City, I owned a modest selection of power and hand tools, which I used to make things for our houses, a pergola, storm windows, kitchen cabinets, a decorative oak table made to imitate a Frank Lloyd Wright design, a redwood planter again uh, made to imitate a Frank Lloyd Wright design, a lattice screen for a room divider, bookshelves. Making actually useful things might inform my preference for representational art over abstract art. As a child, I loved to draw Disney characters for my second grade teacher. I discovered an interest in modern residential architecture in junior high. In college, I was able to take a couple of undergraduate courses in art, history of art, drawing and sculpture while enrolled in an engineering curriculum. As an architecture graduate student, I enjoyed history of the city and design studios. I was less enthralled with having to talk about my design work. I had a favorite aunt who lived on a ranch in Wyoming who piqued my interest in art with her examples of self-taught oil paintings of Western landscapes. My interest in building was stimulated by my grandfather who was a plasterer, stuccoer, and carpenter. The houses he built were simple and small but were meticulously executed. Most of my artwork starts with a photographic representation or sketch of an image that is meaningful to me. I have learned from Jim Oakes that photos are imperfect representations of images and that they require editing to use them as references for painting. Objects close to the camera and far away objects appear identical in a photo. Far away objects must not appear as clear and sharp as those close up. Usually a beautiful photograph can be improved by an, an artist. You'll see some examples in my work where I have chosen black and white photos um, by some of the best photographers to use as references for paintings. Ansel Adams, Henry Cartier, Brest, Brisson. I am red, green, color challenged. Jim Oakes usually spends time helping me to be sure I understand the colors in a photo reference before I start work. Many of the subjects I use to paint are familiar to me or I took the photo reference after spending time looking carefully at it before painting it. The photo is a crutch to help me accurately portray shapes, form, details. My architecture work and my experience building things has influenced the way I look at structures. 
I know how building details should look. I'm attracted to old cars, trucks, derelict buildings, and other commonplace objects. These subjects remind me of when those old cars were running around my neighborhood when I was a boy. I had friends or relatives who lived on ranches in Wyoming, and I remember riding in their trucks. These trucks were very different than those made today. Even as antique objects, they have a certain beauty with their rust and dents. So painting for me is partially an act of memory, recalling a place or an object where there is no photographic record, just an image in my mind. My paintings become a way for me to honor and respect those objects or places. Before photography was available for everyone to record important objects or places, paintings were reserved for the rich, important people. Portraits of rich, important people are hung in every museum. I think most of my artworks <clears throat> are more representational, but are not extreme realism. I like to think they're a combination of some realism mixed with some impressionism. I like to pay attention to details, but I'm not so dogmatic, dogmatic that I'm opposed to blurring reality where it fits. I like watercolor's ability to blend wet on wet colors to create interesting backgrounds. I'm still experimenting with the use of complementary colors and glazing with a base layer of opaque color and subsequent layers of transparent color. It's taken me a while to be able to build up colors sufficiently. It's easy to be fooled that a painting is done <clears throat> while it is still wet <clears throat> and then realize it needs more work after it has dried. <coughs> I like to apply pen and ink line work very lightly. After the application of paint, the line work should not be too detectable. I belong to several um, online art groups for the purpose of displaying artwork. One person remarked that my paintings were illustrations, not art. I politely disagreed, but I'm still perplexed by the difference between art and illustration. It seems like it is one of those subjective things that defy definition. You know it when you see it. I don't do plain air, plain air painting. I prefer to sketch live subjects and take photos back to my studio where I can work in a conditioned space unaffected by sun, rain, and wind. It is also important to note that I don't consider myself a commercial artist. I have sold two or three paintings over time, but when I'm starting a painting, I don't think in terms of what would people who buy paintings want to see. I'm usually more motivated by something that interests me and that I would like to have hung in my studio. When people ask, I usually tell them I consider myself an amateur artist who still has a lot to learn. I've donated and gifted many more of my paintings to friends and family members, the library and church fundraiser. The first slide is one of my earliest portraits of my wife from 1975. It's a pastel. And it's about a 10 by 14 size work of art. The next thing to it is about a 12 by 10 uh, watercolor, one of the early watercolors showing wet onto wet techniques. This is a, uh, I, you, if you've seen some, uh, more of my work, you'd realize I go back, uh, I do certain subjects over and over again. This is another picture of the um, portrait I did of my wife from 1974, but I did it this more recently, and it's a watercolor. The first one was a pastel, and this is a watercolor, and I just like the differences in, uh, involved in the, the two mediums, and this is about a uh, uh, 10 by 13. This is a still life a metal picture, and it's about a 10 by 12 watercolor, and it's um, the, the library purchased this from, for their collection. And I, I, this, I got the picture for this came from not my picture, but a, a Pinterest photo. Um, this picture, on, I, like I said, I like old vehicles, a 1947 Dodge truck. And the, the site of this was our, our house. That's our old carriage house and where we lived in Sioux City. And I drove this truck. And a neighbor of mine actually had it restored in uh, the um, like to, he wasn't able to drive, but he liked to be driven. So I drove him around a few times in it. Uh, the other one is a watercolor, early watercolor of my wife. Uh, 
at Rehoboth Beach in Virginia. It's watercolor. And then uh, this is another still life of um, fruit in a wood bowl that I made when I was in eighth grade at my in wood shop. Uh, and then the other photo is uh, the location where my daughter and her husband lived in um, New York City at Princess Martha Apartments. Well, not a very nice place, but anyway. This is a, a painting that I entered into the um, Iowa uh, Watercolor uh, Artist Regional Show, show in 2015 and uh, got a second place in the regional show. So this is the Prairie Lights Entrance Canopy. And this is watercolor and pen and ink. <clears throat> this is a pencil drawing of a house that everybody's familiar with, the Lindsay House at College and Summit Streets. And what many people probably wouldn't realize that this house it was like the old Sears houses. It came to Iowa City on a railroad car and was put together um, from every, everything was sent in one car or maybe several cars, I'm not sure, but it's a very interesting looking house. The Harvest Landmark Barn, many people should be um, uh, aware of it, I'm sure too, on Scott Boulevard. This is a watercolor pen and ink and pastel. And this is at a little different angle Usually most people are, are familiar with the other side, but especially at Halloween and Christmas. The other photo, adjacent photo, is uh, a 1942 Hudson Woody. And the backdrop for it is a project that I worked on uh, in Laramie, Wyoming, uh, the UW Foundation. I expanded it. There's an addition on it there and other work on the inside. But I, I like using some of my projects as a backdrop for other things that I uh, I, when we were driving across um, across the country one time, someplace in Indiana is a Hudson Museum, and I went inside and took photos of several of their cars there. Not that I love Hudson so much, but it's kind of interesting. In 1942, um, during World War II, uh, metal was so highly uh, needed for the military that car manufacturers were all going to wood. A, a large Porsche portion of cars are made from wood. Um, my wife and I took a trip uh, to London and, and Rome after we had retired. And this, I, the courtyard for the British Museum attracted my attention. Um, Sir Norman Foster designed the skylight over the top of this big courtyard. It has a round building in the middle of it and in the classical rooms of the old uh, original British Museum. Uh, surround this round uh, structure. Uh, barn, winter Barn View is um, I, 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 not a lot of people really like it, but I just like the idea of looking through a window. And this is in the Adirondacks in Speculator, New York. A friend had this cabin, and I like looking out on the barn, and it's a winter scene, and everything's kind of gray. Um, and also, I've been attracted to sailing for a long time. Uh, so I've got several versions of ocean sailing, and uh, this one has the water coming over the gunnels of the side of the sailboat, and and the uh, sailboat is leaning over. I, I like the the action displayed by it, and I've also been attracted jet to Japanese gardens for a long time. This uh, this painting on the left was uh, Japanese garden water crossing in Portland, Oregon, um, watercolor pen and ink and pastel. And it had these nice round stones that allowed you to cross this little stream. And uh, there are other Japanese art articles there too. And the next one is the Giesborough Priory. It's, it's in England. It's so the remains of a, of a church structure that um, um, are no longer used and there's no roof over it. So you can see um, plants and stuff growing on the walls. But again, I like the, uh, uh, the effect of it, the, the stonework. Um, my wife and I also did a trip to the um, national parks in uh, Utah and the Arches National Park. I love this picture. It looks like a big eye. And maybe that's what it was actually called. Watercolor, pastel, and colored pencil. 
And then the other one was uh, connect not far away from Arches is Kenyon Lands. And I like this sort of late afternoon sun is setting and creating sort of a golden effect on some of the stone. But, and again, here's where you see uh, the effect of um, when things are shown far away, they, they don't become so precise, they become, um, uh, you can see distance in them. I don't know how many people are familiar with the in American Indian relay race, but it's very exciting to watch. Um, Indians uh, in the rodeos, they race around a, an arena, they have no saddles, um, they have a, something to hold onto a bridle, but they, they, they change horses and, and, it, and it, it's all very exciting. Uh, nobody has gotten hurt, I don't think yet, but it's uh, uh, very exciting to watch if you ever have a chance to see it. So I tried to get the action involved in that. Uh, the other picture is a place near, uh, very familiar to me in Wyoming, uh, Woods Landing. Uh, got a really nice mountain stream that comes down through it, but this is a little ways away from it. And uh, it just has some uh, an old ranch. And there's a house uh, kind of in the corner to the right center and a barn and maybe a couple of barns and a shed and there's a horse in there. So it just kind of gives you the effect of what it's like in the winter time. This is a Plains Indian on a horse. And I just like the, the effect of this, the dignity and um, the, the design of the, on the horse with the various wow. objects that you know, they mean to certain things. And uh, the, the wind's kind of ruffling the hair on the mane of the horse. And this is a picture of an old cowboy. P people like this used to be around uh, Cheyenne, old ranchers that uh, seen better days. Um, had a lot of hard work and got a stained hat there. So I, I, that's, I've seen people that look like this. Uh, this fallen leaf, just outside of the senior center, a leaf in the fall was laying on the concrete, and the cracked concrete. And I just, that uh, was on one of those just uh, objects that just attracted me at the time. I've always liked uh, I am Pays La Louvre glass pyramid in Paris. That, that this, I added people doing various things, a ballerina and so I thought, I don't know why I felt like doing that, but it seemed like the right thing to do. I played saxophone in high school and I loved it. I loved the looks of the saxophone, the uh, buttery golden hues and how light shines off of it. And the, combined with the mellow tones that it produces. So I, I just, this is just a way of honoring the tenor saxophone. This is a pen and ink and watercolor of my wife and I, where we uh, lived overlooking the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. Um, just kind of showing the background of where we lived. Uh, this is a visitor center at Custer State Park. I just love the, the stone and uh, rough timber. Um, several different materials involved in the building, but it's a, it's a really interesting building. And the other picture is uh, showing what happens with a lot of structures over time, the demolition. And it's not a very pretty sight. Uh, you can see the dust being produced uh, by the action of the uh, backhoe there. And on Market Street, uh, excuse me, Jefferson Street is this building called Hutchinson House that has been here in Iowa City since 1860s, I think is when it was built. And I don't know if people realize that we have some pretty old structures here in Iowa. Um, then the Pontiac, 1953 Pontiac hood ornament. I love this um, orange red kind of insert that goes into the chrome headpiece or hood, hood piece. My wife has an antique sewing machine. I guess it would be antique by today's standards anyway, but she still uses it. And um, it, it's kind of very attractive. It has uh, engraved and or painted um, uh, parts to it. it it's, it's really interesting. So singer sewing machine. Then I have my bass player on the left, uh, watercolor and colored pencil. 
And I just like the perspective of this one. And the next one to it is uh, a photo that I took at the Medicine Bow National Park, which is outside of Laramie, about 30 miles or so up in the mountains. And it was an abandoned log cabin that was used for somebody at some time, but uh, it's, uh, to me, probably is not there any longer, but it, it, it shows how hard it is at this altitude, this is up to eight to 10,000 feet above uh, sea level, how hard it is to exist uh, any structure. They don't last that long. And some more of my antique autos. But just uh, lots of interesting parts to them, but uh, they're just, uh, they don't last forever. And also another one of my Japanese gardens you know, with a structure, a Japanese structure, which shows how intricate and interesting the design is of Japanese buildings. And my, my wife got into basket weaving for a while. And this is an example of uh, one of the baskets. She typically gave them away. And the only way I would be able to remember them is by having a few paintings. I think I've got a couple other paintings of them, but uh, I, I just wanted to be able to remember them. And the bottom painting, um, this is a Krogan Island mill inside and some of the equipment that's used this is a water power mill. We had some furniture that my father-in-law made from us that came from this mill. And it's, uh, it just helps me to remember what it was like when you're standing in this, when the water, when the water paddles are on and the, um, they have belts that connect the water paddle to different pieces of machinery. And when you're standing there, the whole floor is shaking. I couldn't get that effect, but if you know what a water powered mill is like, you would know what, the, what this maybe is like. And then on the east side of Iowa City is an old barn, which is not being used in a, as a barn anymore. And uh, I had to add a, an old antique Chevy truck to the scene, even though that's not sitting there either. And there's actually a paved road where I'm showing it a dirt two track, but I, I just like uh, the sort of iconic Iowa farm image. Now uh, we, my wife and I like traveling to the Tetons. Uh, Mount Moran is just across Jackson Lake in this view with the, the old uh, rough uh, lumber fence uh, with the, the bark peeling off. And the picture on the right is again just honoring um, music to me. That's what this view of this cellist, watercolor pen and ink. I love visiting the Des Moines Art Center courtyard, a really nice courtyard with a little reflecting pool and a sculpture in the middle of the pool. And it has some interesting architectural parts to the Des Moines Art Center. The building on the left is done by Ian Pei. And the building on the right is done by Richard Meyer. And then there's a building behind me, which is the, the original part of the museum. Uh, and I can't remember the name of the architect now, but three different architects. And each of their portions of the museum are joined together. So it's a continuous flow from one to the other. Very interesting. And I had a, a friend uh, lived on a ranch in Wyoming and his family always drove old Buicks. And this Buick, this old uh, antique Buick is the kind of things that they would have liked or would have, had, would have driven on their ranch. And then the other one is again, my Ansel Adams black and white photo that I tried to render with some color. Old car in an old church. During my, my travels in, in uh, uh, 1970 in Europe, I was in a, a park in Paris where I came across this sculpture and I spent some time sketching it and later, many years later, decided I, I would like to really see the fuller part of it. I only had parts of it sketched, but uh, this is a watercolor and more of the whole thing. And on the right, Again, this is Henry Cartier Bresson, one of his black and white photos, but I re envisioned this with color, showing in 1960 maybe what 1960s women's fashion colors might look like. So I just thought that was interesting. 
Ken, always interested in views of artists in their studio. We, we have a lot of women artists. And this is one, a way of honoring them as well. And the buffalo from Yellowstone, you can almost see the, the light steamy clouds are, are like the geyser in Yellowstone behind this old buffalo with gray. He's an old one, but uh, he's a very dignified beast. This is a, a view of uh, a place where we stayed called Signal Mountain Lodge across the Jackson Lake from the Tetons. And a very, very nice place to be. And, um, this, I just needed to honor that, uh, how relaxing and peaceful it was to be there. And I've always loved uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. And this is the painting that I did to honor her. She said, you must do the things you think you cannot do. And I, I always loved that. Uh, another picture of a Signal Mountain Lodge looking across Jackson Lake towards uh, the Tetons. And then I've always been fascinated with the one on the right of Italian hill towns in the way the buildings seem to just um, join together and make interesting geometric shapes and forms and shadows. And uh, so this is my uh, view of an Italian hill town. And Medicine Bow National Forest, I've come back to this similar view of it over and over again. You'll see another one coming up in my, in my photos here. Uh, and then on the right, top right, is a cabinet, a cabin that we stayed in at Signal Mountain Lodge. Little fireplace, windows, log structure. Uh, while we were there that night, we had a snowstorm and heavy wind. And um, it was, we woke up the next morning, there hadn't been any snow up on the mountains. And we came outside and it was all, everything was white. Uh, the one on, on below was a still life that, uh, that I set up and did. And uh, this is a painting I think I gave to a friend. One of the projects I worked on while here in Iowa City, uh, architecture projects, was for the Musquaki Clinic. This is a watercolor showing parts of the building involved in that. And then the porch of the Signal Mountain Lodge where we stayed uh, next to the Tetons. When we were in Rome, I was fascinated by the Museo del Arapaches Museum in Rome by Richard Mayer, that he did this modern structure um, adjacent to these classical structures that are all, all over Rome. And I'm surprised they allowed him to do that. But there it is, it's kind of a cheeky sort of a remark and uh, uh, his modern structure against the classical eternal city. And then uh, something, I, if we, if any of you have ever seen so Notre Dame burning in 2019, I think, and it was such a sad thing to see. I'd been there um, in my 1970 travels, and uh, I, it, it was very sad. But I had to, I had to do that to honor it. And growing up in Wyoming, I, the big boy locomotive number 404014. Is, was a locomotive that most Wyomingites are pretty familiar with. It hauled freight trains over the mountains from Cheyenne to Laramie. And um, it has been restored and it's made a cross country trip across the nation recently. And uh, it is a huge beast of, a, of uh, iron and steel. And uh, the picture of the bicycle and, and the girl in Belgium, uh, I, I like drawing it because it uh, shows a uh, different kind of brickwork that's done in Belgium. Uh, we don't do it quite the same way here, but it was, it was a really attractive photo for me, the bike and, and the uh, nice brickwork and the, the plants on the window. Growing up in Wyoming, I had a, a, an uncle who married a, a girl from this little, a little town called Sunrise, Wyoming. Turns out it was really kind of an interesting company town by the Colorado Steel and Iron Company. They had schools and stores and houses for people. It was essentially mining uh, in this little tiny town. And now it's all 
kind of abandoned other than this building and this old 1942 Cadillac that's sitting outside slowly deteriorating. This is another view of that old 1942 Cadillac that I did more recently. Just they wanted to see a little more close-up view of what it looked like. Did change the colors a bit, but uh, and showing sort of the natural setting around the, the area. Another view of the Louvre in IMP's uh, pyramid glass entrance into the Louvre. Um, I'm not sure. I think this is an Ansel Adams photo, and uh, which again would have been black and white <coughs> of the Sierra Madre Mountains in California. But I uh, tried to do that in watercolor and color. And one morning I was walking past the old Capitol Museum for the right photo and the shadows and the early morning light really enhanced the look of the museum and I really wanted to capture that. So it wasn't plain air exactly, but close to it. In the upper left-hand corner, uh, my daughters and my grandfather. We were visiting my grandfather in his house and there was, um, it was just interesting to have a view of um, sort of showed information about my granddaughters and my grandfather and the type of footwear that they had. So that was the reason for this. And then when my daughters were younger, the picture on the upper right, there's a place called Vitavu between Cheyenne and Laramie with solid rocks that are piled on top of one another. And uh, we were all there one day for a picnic and I just like the poses that we had with this picture. In the bottom picture is a uh, uh, lighthouse in Maine with uh, all the natural stone outcroppings around the seashore. Um, my grandfather's uh, in the upper left, uh, I thought were interesting, sort of iconic figures from their time. Uh, very different time than, than today for sure. And the picture below that, I call my Wyoming people, and this was a, from a photo in 1950. And all the, these people, these relatives, I would see them every holiday, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, we all uh, shared together. And I had a great aunt, she's in this picture too. This was her cabin that she had uh, on the Big Thompson River going to Estes Park from Loveland. And she was quite an interesting lady. And the picture on the right is my grandson when he was three years old. When we were in Sioux City, we had an old 1890 Victorian. And this is a painting of me painting that old Victorian, which wasn't a fun job. I've always been fascinated by sailing. And this is a picture of a sailboat kind of sailing into what might be not, might be considered the best of the weather. It's sort of dark and cloudy and yeah, it looks like uh, he doesn't have all the sails up and just sort of a metaphor almost for, you know, life, I guess. And uh, oftentimes you have conditions that you have to sail into that uh, aren't the best in the world. And on Prairie du Chien was this little uh, cottage. Uh, it was part of a trailer park and in this cottage is a combination of some actual carpentry building materials and maybe a portion of a small trailer joined together. But it was somebody's house. It was a, it's abandoned now. You can see that it's just kind of slowly deteriorating. And I have another view of that in watercolor later. The picture on the right, I, we have a lot of Amish around us and I, I, I like uh, their lifestyle a lot. And these boys uh, sort of, Made, uh, made a nice picture, I thought. Uh, Zion Lutheran Church in Iowa City is where my wife and I were going to church for a while. And um, we went through some improvements in the church. Uh, but a lot of the building has a, um, a look like prairie style architecture. And we did some improvements here that helped to reinforce that. And I, I wanted to kind of capture that with this uh, watercolor painting. This is the uh, trailer park in Prairie du Chien Road with colors. And you see that little cottage is, it is painted this bright blue color, which you know you can't miss. You couldn't before, and now it's been torn down. And the whole property is in, in the process of being um, 
removed and turned into something different, something new, I guess. One morning, early morning, when I was my wife and I were downtown walking, this is a November, early November, we saw this Spanish American lady walking downtown barefooted with a blanket around her. And I went home immediately and just sketched what I remember. I just, there was something so like you wouldn't run into something like that in the middle of downtown Iowa City. And then uh, while we traveled in Rome or near Rome, we came across this cloister at the Abbey of St. Paul. And I just like the, the idea of these abbeys with a covered corridor that, serve, that goes around two or three sides usually of a, of a landscaped, beautifully landscaped, uh, peaceful area. And here's another view of my Medicine Bowl National Forest in Lake Marie, showing the stones um, that are just barely underwater. When uh, my, my family and I, we came, we picnicked up here. And one time we actually were gonna camp out. We had a, we had a borrowed tent we borrowed from my uncle. And so my brother and sister and I, and my mom and dad, we had it all set up. And, um, and my dad actually had a, a boat that he liked to fish from. And we went, when we went fishing on this Lake Marie, I had to be out over the front end of the boat and telling my dad how steering him around between rocks. But also later that night, everybody was leaving when, uh, and we, we didn't know what was going on, but it turned out there was a big storm coming and everybody else knew about it but us. You know, so in the middle of the night, my parents got us up and piled us in the car because we had, you get at this altitude, you get these freakish winds and uh, that's what was happening. And it looked like our tent was about ready to blow away. So uh, that's some of my memories of this area. And this is a picture of a, an abandoned farmhouse in South Dakota. My daughter and I went, went out driving around one afternoon, Sunday afternoon. She was bored and we wanted to do something. And we, bought, we had sketch pads and pencils and we decided to find some interesting picture that we could, we could sketch. And this old abandoned farmhouse to me looked like a real good thing to sketch. I've ad added some things like the old Dodge truck and, and the old farm uh, implement. But uh, other than that, I, this is sort of the scene that was there, a very nat natural scene. This is a, 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 a photo, a black and it was a black and white photo by Peter Ralston in Maine. And it's called Island Farm. They have all these little islands along the coast of Maine, but they're so hard to, to keep them supplied dur during the winter when uh, the weather is really bad that they are summer island farms. And once summer, spring, summer, early fall are done, uh, people go to the mainland. And so this is, area is kind of abandoned then, but uh, it, this is what it looks like. It's pretty difficult uh, conditions during the winter. And this was a picture I think I found on Pinterest or something. Uh, of the Rocky Mountain National Park, so an area that I'm familiar with, but not this particular view. I just like the just sort of the deep, dark gulch that this water is flowing down and through. In the upper left is me and my Ducati in 1968 going through the Sonoran Desert. And to the right is a picture I did um, to honor my father in his service in World War II. He was a member of the Burma Bridge Busters. And that insignia on his leather jacket is what tells you that. And he was a tail gunner in a B-25. And so I just drew my version of a tail gun position and what it might have looked like around there just to honor him and what he did there. And the bottom picture on the left, 1969 had an art course where we were sketching molds from Michelangelo's David sculpture. And this was the eye. And I, I mentioned my eighth grade wood shop. This was a, a bowl that I created there. And then my oak planter table that I built and I no longer have it, unfortunately. And then below that uh, is the redwood planter that I gave away for a wedding present. It's kind of like a Frank Lloyd Wright planter. And to the left uh, 
was a lattice room divider and bookshelving combination that I made in 1975 for our studio apartment in Washington, D.C. And to be able to make that um, room divider, I had to make a sort of a workbench. And so I had red wood pieces that I made, and this was just sitting out on our patio on the sixth floor of this building that we lived in. And below that is a, is a uh, drawing that I did for what's called a parcels desk. And I'm sitting in front of it right now. There's bookshelves underneath it. Very compact and uh, very practical. My computer's sitting on the top. And to the left, or to the right, I'm sorry, is a garden pergola that I made. Uh, and one of the girls, the girl on the left, is my daughter and her friend and his and her brother are there trying out my pergola. It has some little seats in it. And uh, we had that for a number of years. And that's the end. Well, thank you, David.